Grow smart. Invest big. Subscribe now. All right, let's dive right into this. We're looking at a serious high stakes showdown in the crypto space today. And no, we're not just talking about buying some ETH. We're digging into three different companies that are making massive leveraged bets on its future. Each one has a totally unique game plan, and we're going to break it all down to see who might just have the winning strategy. So here's the big question that kicks this all off. How do you take an investment in ETH and, you know, supercharge it? We're on the hunt for those high risk, high reward plays the ones specifically designed to amplify every single move Ethereum makes. So what exactly are we talking about here? Well, the source calls these leveraged ETH plays. Basically, these are public companies that act like giant corporate piggy banks for Ethereum. Their main goal, stack as much ETH as they possibly can. The idea is that their stock prices will move right along with ETH. So when ETH soars, they could soar even higher. But, and this is a big but, that leverage is a double-edged sword when the market heads south. Okay, to make this easy to follow, we're giving our three contenders some nicknames, some archetypes based on their strategy. So get ready to meet the Titan, the Yield Machine, and the Wild Card. Each one is taking a completely different shot at betting big on Ethereum. First up in the ring, we've got BMNR. This is our Titan, and we're calling it that for one very simple reason. It's absolutely jaw-dropping scale. In this niche, it is the undisputed heavyweight champion of corporate ETH holders. And the scale here is just staggering. We're talking $11.4 billion in total holdings. Now, to put that into perspective for you, their treasury holds over 2% of the entire circulating supply of Ethereum. Think about that. That's a massive, potentially market-moving position. Next on our list is SPIT, and this is our yield machine. Now, it's also piling up ETH, but its strategy is a little different. It's more focused on actually generating returns through things like staking rewards and doing aggressive share buybacks. It's all about making their ETH stash work for them. And you want to see that strategy in action? The source projects that by September 2025, SBF Tweet will have stacked up over 3,200 ETH from staking rewards alone. That is pure yield, just compounding their exposure and adding right to their bottom line. And our final contender is ETHZ. This is our wild card. This one is the high risk potential deep value play. It just went through a huge rebrand. It used to be a biotech company, if you can believe that. This is the ultimate turnaround story, the underdog in this fight for sure. And here's exactly why we're calling it a wild card. The stock is down a whopping 74% year to date. Now, a drop like that would scare anybody off, right? But for some investors, that screams deeply undervalued, especially now that it's pivoted to focus on accumulating ETH. All right, so we've met the players. Now it's time to put them head to head. Let's dive into the technical charts and see what the market momentum is telling us about each one right now. Looking at the data here, the signals are all over the map. BMNR's chart is showing a bullish wedge breakout, which is a classic technical pattern that suggests a potential move up. SBET, on the other hand, is giving off all sorts of mixed signals, creating some real uncertainty. And then you've got ETHZ, its key indicator, the RSI, is way down in oversold territory. Now, that can sometimes suggest a stock is due for a bounce. But hey, technical charts only tell you part of the story, right? To get the full picture, we gotta understand the fundamental risks and rewards that come with each company's strategy. So let's weigh the danger against the potential upside. And yeah, each one of these comes with its own unique flavor of risk. For BMNR, it's dilution. They just sold $365 million of new stock. Think of it like this. The pizza is still the same size, but now there are more slices, so each one is a little smaller. For SBET, it's performance risk. They actually paused their ETH buys and posted a huge loss, which is not great. And for ETHC, the risk is just pure white knuckle volatility. It is the most unpredictable of the bunch, hands down. So after weighing all the strategies, the charts, and the risks, where does the source land? We're at the final verdict. We're gonna reveal the top pick and talk about a potential strategy for how you could even approach these things. And this brings us right back to that huge question we started with. After everything we've looked at, which of these three leveraged ETH plays actually looks like the most compelling opportunity for an investor today? According to the analysis from the source, the top pick right now is BMNR, the Titan. The verdict is that even with that dilution risk, its insane combination of massive scale and positive technicals just makes it stand out from the crowd. So the reasoning really boils down to four key things. One, its scale is just unmatched. It's the biggest player in the game, period. 
Two, it's got elite backing from people like Kathy Wood's ARK Invest and Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. Three, those technical charts are looking really bullish. And four, the timing might just be perfect. That little price dip after they sold stock could be a great buying opportunity. But hold on a second. What if you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket? Is there a case to be made for a diversified approach here? For spreading your investment across the Titan, the Yield Machine, and the Wild Card? Well, the source presents a pretty balanced argument. The big pro is that you get diversification across different strategies. You get scale, yield, and value all in one. But the big con? They're all chained to the price of ETH. If Ethereum drops, all three of them are probably going down together. So you're diversifying the how, but you're not diversifying the what. Now, for anyone who actually likes that diversified strategy, the source lays out a potential game plan. It suggests putting a 50% core position in BMNR for that growth, 30% in SBT for the yield, and then a smaller, more speculative 20% position in ETZ as the value play. So while BMNR might be the top pick for now, the source is really clear. This is an incredibly fast-moving space. The core question isn't just which of these leveraged bets is going to win, but whether the massive risk they all share is worth the potential reward. Now that's the high-stakes showdown to keep your eyes on. Oh, 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 oh,